Hey everybody and welcome to the video. So today's video is all about me answering your questions that you had for me ahead of my ultra next weekend. So I'll be putting up the question up on the screen just so you can see who the user is, who has put the question. Uh, they may well have a YouTube channel. If they do, please do consider subscribing to them as well. And of course I'll be answering the questions honestly and just kind of straight up uh, as I see it. So I have seen the questions before, but it's the first I've really thought about responding to them. First question comes in from Ben Notley and it says Pepsi or Coca-Cola? Very simple, Coca-Cola for me, never been a fan of Pepsi, don't know why, but it's always been Coca-Cola and actually to add to that, Coca-Cola out of a glass bottle. I can see there was a reply on that from Seth James Damore, he said Coke as well. Got a message in now uh, with quite a few little questions from uh, Pursue Purpose, that's Lee. Here's a few things I took away from my ultra a few weeks ago. My question to you is, will you be implementing similar? So around the halfway point, I had my wife meet me. I changed trainers, not socks because it was a dry day. The difference was made, this made for me was astronomical. Will you be changing shoes at all? Also, I like to carry something naughty in a bag so that if I can feel that slight lack of energy, I'll take it. Lo and behold, three weeks later, I find an untouched brownie. What's your go-to quick fix? And last but not least, is a Jaffa cake a biscuit or a cake? All the best rooting for you so to answer the first question um, I probably won't have your wife meet me around the halfway mark and actually um, Centurion are really quite clear about this in their events sort of policy there is no um, uh, additional aid allowed so you can't have any paces you can't have um, anybody crewing for you it's simply what you've got on your back and what the aid stations provide so unfortunately I wouldn't be able to change shoes, I wouldn't be able to change socks or anything like that, which is uh, something I don't maybe I would consider it because given the weather at the moment, I know that the elements of the North Downs Way are going to be really dry and hard and sometimes the trail shoe is actually not that useful. So yeah, unfortunately it's what you're wearing at the start line, is what you wear at the finish line and everything else in between is either uh, sort of supplied by yourself or by the aid stations. Um, in terms of something kind of naughty, a quick fix, I do like the Lara bars. They've got a new flavour out called um, Cookie Dough. I think it's just over there, I can see it. Uh, I have to be really careful because when I buy it ahead of the race, I've got to make sure I don't eat my supply. So that or maybe a Cliff Bar. But my recent attempts to eat, eat a Cliff Bar my Ultra was a bit rubbish, so I'm not sure I feel too confident with that. Jaffa cake, a biscuit or a cake? Um, did you see the big documentary on that? There's a big documentary that went out about that uh, and um, kind of favourite biscuits and cakes of old. And uh, yeah, it's all to do with, isn't it? Whether it goes, um, was it hard if you leave it out for longer or soft or something like that? So um, yeah, my understanding of that is that it is a cake. It's a miniature cake. Uh, in the documentary, they actually expanded it, like tripled its size, quadrupled its size, la da 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 and it just turned out to be a big cake. So thanks for your question, Ellie. Running on Mark, uh, why are you running this specific event and distance? What has kept you motivated during your training trip? How do you rate your prep and why is Ben always following you? So first of all, why am I running this specific event and distance? I did it last year. I wasn't happy with my time. I wasn't happy with uh, what happened on the day. Unfortunately, you can't do much about an injury, but I just felt a bit unfulfilled by it. So I figured that I would go for it again. Uh, in terms of motivation during my training, two things really. First of all, very selfishly, uh, obviously you're driven by personal achievement. It's something that I've I've wanted to do. I, f I felt like last year I, I walked away from it not feeling uh, entirely fulfilled or happy with my result. So I just figure if I'm going to go for it again, it will be the following year whilst I've still got it in my mind that I want to do it. And the second thing is I'm motivated uh, by the idea of this video uh, being watched back in the future, the video, sorry, of my race, being watched back in the future by my child um, and by me. And just to kind of show that you can do anything you put your mind to. My prep, uh, to be honest with you, is is not has not been great. Uh, I will be on the start line undertrained, um, better than overtrained, but not in the condition I would like. Doing the thirty mile of fifty k two weeks ago, I'm pleased to be able to obviously do thirty miles, but it wasn't in a time that would allow me to to be too much quicker than last year over fifty miles. Uh, yeah, I would I would like to have gone out a lot more. But um, family, COVID, work, little person in my life now, um, all of those things just meant that the training did not go how I intended it to. But hey, 
you work with what you've got. And even if I had trained even harder, I could have had an injury now. There's all sorts of things that can happen. As it stands, I'm injury free and ready to race in a week's time. Why is Ben always following you? I don't know. That guy's like a shadow. Um, but, uh, you know, I guess when you're in the shadow of a god, um, there's a chance that you might get some scraps of that that fall onto you. So, yeah, there it is. Uh, Bev, fueling, please. You spoke about what you're carrying during the race, but I wonder about day to day during training. Leading up to race two, please. What are you particularly eating this week in the last couple of days before the morning, uh, before and the morning of? Uh, do you take uh, care to keep up with your protein? So um, normally the week leading up to the race, I eat really clean. So I cut out all the additional junky food things and I just try and eat as as well as I can. So get the, uh, the salads, the veggies, the fruit. I eat pretty well anyway. Um, I mean, I have a little plan. Uh, I've left it. On the side of this but i can roughly tell you we've got things like a nice lentil bolognese um potato gnocchi tomato gnocchi that's really nice um so pasta dishes carby dishes things like that but things like i'm enjoying eating and uh, things that are sort of sit well in my stomach that and just yeah when i feel like i, I want to have something sweet i just hit the fruit now uh day of the race um, it's a 7 a.m. start, so I'll be there probably 6.30, which means I'll be up probably 5.30, maybe a slice of toast. Uh, I don't, most of my runs are, are, I sort of just go out, out of bed, fasted if you like. So I'm not used to eating before a run, and actually at 50k did a few weeks ago, it was really weird because it started at 10.30 in the morning, I didn't know what to do. So that's what I'm going to do. I don't track protein, I don't track anything really, I just go with how I feel. Um, but ultimately it's just about keeping hydrated and eating some good foods just that sit well with your stomach and you feel happy. I don't try anything new and I also don't uh, carb load. I'm not eating tons of pasta the night before. I just eat well throughout the week to make sure I'm feeling, yeah, uh, just full up and feeling happy with, with what's inside. The Cotswold Trail Runner. Hi Dan, I have a few. What are your time goals? So let's answer that first of all. Uh, the idea of this year was to try and achieve uh, a sub 10. Um, realistically, that would that would be pretty pretty much a miracle if that happened. So the three time goals of this, uh, or three goals in fact. Um, goal number one is obviously to finish the distance. Uh, goal number two is to beat last year's time, which was eleven fifty seven, and then goal number three would be to go sub ten. Any of those would be delightful, um, but ultimately, I guess the idea is to finish the race with a smile on my face. Um, will it depend on the conditions of the day? At the moment, it's looking like it's between 14 and 20 degrees, dry and sunny. So we'll start at about 40 degrees, which is pretty warm already. And then the, it will top out at 20 degrees for the day. Uh, yeah, running uh, in the heat, of course, is something I was concerned about. Uh, and equally the rain as well. I don't like getting wet feet. It's not something that I enjoy. Because even with like a rain jacket on, I feel like it just drips down my leg into my shoes. So it looks like it's just going to be a dry and sunny day. I've got to just be careful with the things like salt tabs because I feel like last year I got cramped quite early on, which I rarely get. Um, I've put it down to lack of salt. Uh, no crew. Uh, so it says, will you have a crew to support you? Unfortunately not. No, no crew allowed, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, aid stations. I've never actually used an aid station in any race other than to just top up my bottles. At the 50k recently, towards the end, I had a packet of crisps. Um, the good thing about those aid stations were Everything apart from the homemade flapjacks were vegan friendly, so I could actually have whatever I wanted. Centurion, my understanding that last year, a lot of things that were there were not vegan, so I couldn't have them. I don't like to rely on any station, rather rely on food and nutrition, hydration that I have tested. But um, to be perfectly honest with you, when you're having a bit of a rough day and things are going poorly, 40 miles onwards, anything goes. So if it's not working for you, try something different. But generally speaking, I'll be carrying the majority on me. Uh, Tailwind, uh, Gels, Cliff Bar, Lara Bar. Um, have you been training hills? Yeah, so to be honest with you, this year's training, uh, whilst it's not been as, as good as I'd like, the hills have been phenomenally better than last year. Last year, I just avoided the hills, really. I went for time on legs. I went for distance. This time around, I've probably done less distance. Um, maybe similar time on legs, but definitely more hills. Um, so I feel more confident going up the hills. I would like to have done more as I mentioned, but it is what it is. Um, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be a good day out. 
Seth James and more, thank you. Um, aid stations, game plan, time in each spot, eat everything in sight or pack your own food. So as I mentioned, I will be packing majority of my own food. If I decide that I want something is likely to be sweet because a lot of things, so I like it to be uh, salty or savory because a lot of things I have are sweet and generally speaking, I'll probably get quite sick of that after nine, 10 hours on my legs. So aid stations, I kind of fly through, uh, I get my bottles ready before I hit the aid station. So they're already open, ready to go. Because COVID is sort of, you know, we were past that COVID stage where you had to fill up your own bottles. Um, there's chances are they'll be able to help fill, which does speed the process up. Uh, normally what I'll be doing is opening a sachet of Tailwind, dunking it in to the bottle, emptying it there, walk up to the aid stations, they refill it for me, Tailwind water, off I go. Um, so that is the plan. As less time as possible as I need in each spot, less, uh, of course, I, I need to have some fuel um, or I need to do something specific, go to the toilet, this, that and the other. So yeah, I don't aim to spend too much time in the aid stations, partly because as well, if I got to the end of the race and I knew I was 30 seconds off my time, all I'd be thinking is, why did I stop at the aid station? I know I would be. I wouldn't necessarily blame the hills or my fitness. I know I'd just blame an aid station. I stood there for five minutes having a chit chat. And then Ray, happy jogger. Wish you the best on race day. Thank you, Ray. Uh, you have done the work. What do you use as motivation? Try an ultra marathons. A big thing for me is that I want people to understand I'm not an elite runner. I'm not a pro runner. I'm not somebody who runs more than I work. Uh, I have a full-time job. I have a full-time little person in my life now. I have a lot less time for running than I've ever had. Um, so I just want people out there to hopefully see whatever happens on the day. But if you're in the same position as I am, and you, you have to work and you've got a family and you're finding it tough, you do what you can and you work with what you've got. And that's what I'll do. And that's what it will show. It will not show me in my peak fitness. It will not show me having done 100 mile weeks and walking in on race day so fit that I'm ready to take on the world. It will just be me giving it a go. Amateur runner, working hard, doing what I can, facing some challenges, overcoming some things that, you know, I'll be facing that I hadn't intended to face. But fitness is what fitness is. And I'm just, yeah, I'm just motivated, I guess, by by the idea of finishing it, by the dream, by the goal, uh, what it will lead to. And it's nice to be able to be part of that community. It's really nice to finish an ultra and know that there's other people around you that's had the same struggles on that day. It's really, really good. Um, so, yeah, I'm just I'm motivated by that. And of course, YouTube, as you know, I've always put videos up on my YouTube account ever since I started running. I'm motivated by the idea of it becoming a thing, becoming a video. Uh, I'm not necessarily saying it's going to be anything like the last year's video, which has got over 10,000 views, um, but it will be shot from my perspective um, on the day, how I'm feeling and what I'm up to. So I'm excited. I'm really excited. I'm looking forward to doing my very best. So thank you so much for your comments. If there's anything else in the comments section below uh, that you would like answered, please post it there. And sorry if I got to your question um, and didn't give you a full enough answer. Again, please just pop down below a little bit more detail, please. I'm hoping, obviously, it brings as much value as possible to you. So I want to make sure that I've answered uh, clearly enough. So thanks again for taking the time to respond to my post on YouTube. Thank you for your support uh, thus far. And I look forward to seeing you in the comments, hopefully, after race day. Take care.